everyone. Welcome to the Maria Cosette Show. Don't mind me, I'm just attending to my plants on set. I'm very excited for today's show. I have an incredible woman from the Glendale community here, Dr. Ruth Sobey. She is a professor, a photojournalist for the Glendale News Press, and has an incredibly colorful background in media and television. So stay with us for that. And of course, for any further information about the show, visit mariacosette.com slash television, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, all of that good stuff. Stay with us. I'm so excited about my guest today. She's an incredible woman in our community, a professor, but aside from that, a photojournalist for the Glendale News Press. I have Dr. Ruth Sobe. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. You are really an incredible woman, and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from everything you have to say about your exciting journey. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah. So uh, let's start with talking about your background in television. Mm -hmm. Well, I happen to win... Uh, a spot as a teenage TV reporter yes. for Channel 7 in the late 60s. Awesome. Now you know my age, sort of. And I was just so lucky. And at that point, ABC only had four news vans. Right. Really three. And so we'd go to places like Watts, the, the, the riots at that point, and they couldn't send an adult <laughs> reporter. I just happened to be nearby with so the van. The and so I, yes, yeah, so I, I get to filmed these marvelous stories wow. that were really inappropriate for a teenager, but I didn't care. Of course not. Yeah. yeah that's intense. Okay. Um, and then also Emmy nominated. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that. How was that journey? Well, I was nominated for a local Emmy, right? but I'm really proud of a half hour short film that I produced for the American Film Institute when yes. I was going there. And that received the National Student Emmy. That's I was amazing. just thrilled to get that. I'm and, sure. And what was the whole process in creating that piece? Well, that was my considered my Master of Fine Arts I see. degree work. Yes. And we are definitely going to talk about your education later mm -hmm. um, in that you actually went on with all the success in television and all of the amazing things you were doing as a reporter, you went on to pursue a doctorate. What fueled your drive to do that? It was a very simple answer, and that is, at that time, women didn't have a long career in front of the cameras. I see. So I had to be prepared when uh, I knew eventually uh, I would have to drift into something else. Right, and that's amazing. It's a little different today. I mean, back then, you couldn't even be seen pregnant on TV. Oh my goodness! Are yes. you kidding? No. So when I was on pre when I was pregnant, I couldn't be on television. I did not know that. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, I mean, it's very admirable, nevertheless, that you pursued your doctorate because even now, even though things are different, um, and my mom has very much uh, ingrained this in me that yes. education is something nobody could take away from you, mm -hmm. and um, as a you know, as great as your career is going in whatever field, it's always good to, um, you know, pursue a higher education, specifically a doctorate. And uh, right now I'm in a program very similar to yours. So, yeah, no, I think it's incredible that you did that. So let's talk about um, your dissertation research. Mm -hmm. And when people think about dissertation research, um, they think it's rather dry, logical, you know, hundreds of pages of writing, so on and so forth. Um, so, but you managed to uh, receive awards uh, for a 20 minute documentary that you produced based on the research and topic of your dissertation. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. I called it From Homeboy to Schoolboy. Okay. Where gang leaders were chosen, picked out, found to go through a four year academic program at Cal State LA. Okay. And the thought was to turn their street smarts, and they were smart into school smarts they were just given so much uh, help in terms of money and right. tutorials and uh, psychological therapy just they were they were brought along so carefully right and my dissertation question was what is the point of greatest vulnerability where a gang guy will turn to education and want right. to get out of a life of of the gangs, and then what is the same point of vulnerability that makes a young girl leave gang leadership? 
wow, that's to education. And and what did you find at the end of your um, your dissertation and your findings and your recommendations sure. and all of that? Because I followed these um, kids in a nine month program of what was called Power Builders, okay. just to get them up to the point of Chicano activism, really feeling good about themselves and their backgrounds. Right. And um, well, what I found eventually then was that with a young man, it was if a good buddy was shot and killed right, right near him or incarcerated wow. for life. And it could have been him so easily. Right. Just a quirk of fate that it wasn't him. And then with the girl, it would often be when she got pregnant. And she didn't want a life of gangs for her baby. Right, right. And wow. at that point, they really were willing, even though was, the gang life was very profitable, they were dealing in uh, drugs and weapons. Right. And I had some of those kids on the show showing me their weapons. <laughs> wow, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure your dissertation chair, everyone was excited to see something entertaining, right? For yeah, and it was my dissertation chair that suggested, why don't you do a video Fantastic. along with your dissertation? It was her idea. Yeah, that's So as awesome. I said, when I defended it, Everybody had popcorn, and they sh and I showed them my video. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And so, being in you know education now, uh, being a professor and an incredible writer and photojournalist, and all of these things together, and having the experience in media, have you found parallels between the two industries in education and media? Sure, you have to be a good communicator. Yes, and all since communication. I teach yes. English 101 at Glendale Community College, that's freshman composition. Right. And, so, and all, with a great majority of my students, English is their second language. I see. And so uh, I have to communicate with them so that they can best communicate in conversation, on the page. Right. And it goes very much together. Right. And I'm just curious, for that um, level of students, are they... What do they gravitate towards? Do they like writing certain things as opposed to others? Um, are they into creative writing? They want to be they, creative. What do they enjoy? They do want to be yes. creative. Yes, okay. and, and they'd like to write creatively. And I, we teach, uh, I teach argumentative writing, right. which having a thesis and defending your thesis yes. with supporting detail. And they think that can be kind of dull. But I'll say, no, you can get very creative within... Right the the framework of an argumentative essay right right i love it well we have a lot more to chat about i am here with dr ruth sobe please stay with us seven q spa laser and aesthetic center has opened its doors to their new location in glenda a luxurious space offering cutting edge technologies including laser hair removal for men and women all injectables and fillers botox restylane kybella juvederm ultra plus and all other variations pedio thread lift prp facial with mesotherapy and microneedling visit their new location 7q spa laser and aesthetic center Hello everyone, you are back and watching The Maria Cosette Show. So, Dr. Sobe, um, let's talk about the amazing short films that you have directed and produced. And by the way, I admire that you're multifaceted in that sense because sometimes people in the creative world stick to just one thing and I love that you didn't. Um, so, it has been featured in festivals, won awards. Let's talk about the short film. Um. Rose and Cats is the film that uh, won the National Emmy Award right. for students. And that was produced through the auspices of the um, American Film Institute. I see. And what is that story about? Oh, it's a story about um, a little Jewish boy on his way to his Hebrew classes gets dragged into a church by a robber uh, to hold him hostage, okay. and a Jesus statue falls on the robber and knocks him out. So now wow. the boy is convinced that Jesus Christ is his savior and doesn't want the double bar mitzvah that he was going to have with his grandfather because he says, I'm That's a Christian. Right. So he goes ahead. Well, the grandfather goes ahead with his own bar mitzvah. Right. Um, he doesn't even want the little boy there. 
his 13-year-old grandson. Oh, wow. But so when the boy is baptized in a Catholic church, okay. the grandfather comes. So it's not a religious story. It's a love story. Right. That's so interesting. Between a grandfather and his grandson. Yeah. Very unique story. Mm -hmm. Um, I wrote it with my sister. She's. Really? I have to give her the, the greatest um, credit, credit on the writing. Well, yes. you're very lucky to be working with your sibling because my yes. my sister is an incredible artist as far as drawing, but everything else she's just not about it. Singing and yes. um, television, not about it. Amazing at very many other things. But yes. yeah, you're lucky to be working yes, with her. I loved it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what about, um, you know, let's go back to your professorship mm -hmm, a little bit, sure. because I'm very interested to hear about some assignments that mm -hmm. you give. I know that you have a specific one called the letter to the editor. Yes. So let's talk about that. I love to drag the kids away from the ivory tower. I want kids to have practical experience. Right. Very important. And so I do have this letter to the editor project. Primarily, we aim for the Glendale News Press, but we okay. could try the LA Times, we could try El Vaquero, the school newspaper, right. and it's where they take an issue that's important to them, okay. and they write about it. Uh, they, In their first paragraph, they name the issue briefly, and then they talk about their opinion, and I want them to get very, very opinionated oh, they and very love strong. That. Well, they'll yeah. talk about like parking at GCC or the food in the cafeteria. I mean, some oh of the subjects goodness. are heavy, parking some are a little light. Parking is lining. always a problem for every student everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. They love to talk about that. Yeah, so they're passionate. They're all about oh, it. Oh, they're okay. very passionate. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. And, and so, so the kids, yes, tell me, tell the, me. The, the first student who will be published, and every every time there's at least one student published, I give him or her um, $10 so I can say, see, not only are you a published writer, but you're a professional writer. I give them 10 extra credit points. With that this is hundred, awesome. They get published in everything. Project, and they get extra credit, and they get money, and they get published. And That's they get, incredible. They're so excited to have their words out there in the community, maybe making a difference some way. What an way. amazing teacher you are. Well, it's, they really get excited. I love, because I'm excited, so I love to see them excited. Yes, of course. I know. Being a teacher is so gratifying. Yes. Honestly, it really, yeah. really is. And they mm -hmm. must love you. Um, we have a good time. Yeah. And so speaking of the Glendale News Press, tell me a little bit about what your, um, you know, what does it entail being a photojournalist for some of my audience that may not know? Um, you know, what, what does that job entail? What are some things that you do and go about your day? Yeah. My yeah. column is on the town. So I'm essentially covering on society. The yes, on yes. the town. Society uh, charity fundraisers. So the right. big parties that raise a lot of money and help the community. Yeah, and you've been there for quite some time. Everybody in the yes. community knows you. Well, I have a real good time, and my friends, I get to interview my friends and take pictures of my friends, and it's been wonderful. Yeah, and then, so let's just say you go to the event, you mm -hmm. cover the event, and I and I love that you cover, um, you know, philanthropic work mm -hmm. and charitable mm -hmm. organizations. That's fantastic. And, and we do that here. We spotlight nonprofits. Yeah, I'm uh -huh. all about that. Isn't that great? Um, it really, really is. Um, especially the people you meet in that uh, world. They're so passionate about what they're oh, doing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm sure you have a lot to write about after you attend the event. Let's talk about your writing process. Where do you get inspiration from? What is the process of you writing your ideas, bringing them to life? I like to write uh, my column as soon as I've covered the event. Or right. as soon, so it's still very exciting. Right, and it's fresh with and me. everything in your head. Yes, yes. and of course, the, the uh, organization is chronological. I talk about what happened at the beginning, Correct. what went on, um, who our MCs are, what entertainment took place, right. fashion show, uh, luncheon, silent auction, live auction, there's a certain formula, you know, to big charity events that are right. now produced for many, many thousands of dollars, hoping to get in right. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. So they, they've become the big ones, very professional affairs. But uh, one of my favorites is Bras for a Cause. Tell me about I it. I haven't that. heard of that. Well, Tell people, me. Well, there's a theme. Okay. This year it's Starry Night, and um, one of my good friends is designing a bra. In fact, I'm going to feature That's her so in my column in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and 
She has Van Gogh's Starry Night theme. The actual, well, she's an artist. That's right. part of her work. And so she has the little flowers and, and the, I don't know if you're familiar with that yes, work. Yes, absolutely. The flowers. Yeah. And so she has that covering the bra as well as she has that golden person um, replica from the Americana. Because she said, I had to turn it into Glendale somehow, <laughs> not just Van Gogh. Right. So she has, it's really beautifully artistic. She has that, that golden man statue, little little version of it, right. on the bra. Right. And she's hoping that people will bid on it and it'll earn a lot of money for cancer awareness in women. Okay. I see, I feel Breast like... Breast cancer awareness. Yeah, because you have to get creative with um, nonprofits and fundraising. Yes. That's awesome. Kathy Lefkowitz was the real uh, mastermind behind this idea. Wow, And she's in cool. Seroptimus. So it's, it's put on by uh, Glendale Seroptimus. Oh, fantastic. And I know uh, my sister knows you. You're involved very much in the community and very much admired for all the work that you do. I just like to see money going to charities and people who, who really are worthy and need the money. Right. Absolutely. And um, so, I, you know, I ask this question to all my guests and for somebody like you that's been so successful in so many different fields, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Why is it important to have a creative outlet? Hmm. Well, I think there can be creativity in everything we do, certainly raising children, being a spouse, going to Ralph's. <laughs> that's true. But uh, I like to do a lot of different things. I mean, that's part of being creative, I think. Right. Uh, so that's why I've gotten into, uh, when I drifted away from news, but I'm back in it now as a photojournalist, right. then I started producing my, my little... Uh, vignettes, my, my short films, and then, right. then eventually a longer film. Uh, and I, I like the school base. That often has been my platform to produce something because schools don't discriminate right. on the basis of age, gender, ethnicity. Right. You know, you it's pay very your tuition and yeah. you can do what you want, you know, within their guidelines, obviously. Right. So I've loved that. I've, get, I've gotten to do what I've wanted to. You know, I put my money in many cases or other people's money into my projects, but right. a lot of the basis has been uh, schooling through a school. Yeah, and I love that you've integrated the two worlds so well. Yes. Yeah, well, weaving I'm, them into one another, your dissertation research, your you know production experience, all of that kind of married into one thing. It's beautiful. I'm a schoolgirl. I mean, I'm a <laughs> professional student, so I just... Love the combination yeah, no, of it's education and media. And also I think part of my creative process is trying to um, have, have something that scares me every day. Something that's to fantastic. do that scares me. Right. And, and so, that way you grow. Well, that's why I've done yeah. some stand-up comedy very recently. You have? And I debuted at the Ice House. Oh, my this goodness. This is through Richie Lees, who is... Uh, the owner of Comic Cure, okay. and so many of the shows he emcees, or is the comic with him, right. the proceeds go to a charity. That's fantastic. So when I did well. the, the Ice House just a couple of weeks ago, that money went to Glendale Arts. That's and the awesome. Alex Theater is the main recipient right, of right. Glendale and Arts And I've always proceeds. said stand-up comedians are brilliant because the the things that you come up with most of which are very relative to current events or whatever uh the case may be social issues they're just brilliant i mean the way you weave things into one another as a comedian and then of course having the nerve to go up there by yourself <laughs> it's I, scary i lost about 10 pounds oh. during <laughs> During that week, again, classes, a series of classes, right. learning how to do this, and then actually going on was really wonderful. Good People for were you. clapping. I mean, I was surprised. Granted, the audience was made up of a lot of our friends, but still, but still they applauded. I love that you did that. I mean, in the middle of the set, right. not just at the end. That's it awesome. really was amazing. You were the star. Well, I love my it. other classmates, too, were, were stars. That's fantastic. We were called the comic clowns. <laughs> I love it. Well, best of luck to you in all your creative Thank endeavors. You. Seriously, Thank I'm you. so happy that you came on here. Thank you very much for having Pleasure me. Pleasure to have you. Chat merci. Bye. <laughs> yes, merci. Shonara <laughs> Kalam. Stay with us on the Maria Cosette Show. The Art of Giving, where we spotlight a charitable organization. 
Every eight minutes, the Red Cross responds to an emergency. The American Red Cross is a humanitarian organization that provides emergency assistance, disaster relief, and disaster preparedness education. ARC was established in 1881 by Clara Barton. Ultimately, J.D. Rockefeller and four other donors gave enough money to create a national headquarter near the White House. The organization's national network of 264 chapters and 36 blood service regions flourishes through its 30,000 employees, the volunteerism of 166,000 individuals who believe in the powerful work ARC does, and consistent training of almost 4 million people in necessary medical skills. You know, we often forget how important such organizations are, not only in what they contribute, but also because without them, our world would be less manageable and secure. The American Red Cross is vital to the well-being of our citizens and since its inception has provided timely medical assistance in times of disaster. For more information about how you can get involved or donate, visit redcross.org. Know the Greats, where we spotlight a legend. Ansel Adams was an American landscape photographer and environmentalist, recognized by his moody black and white images. As an innovative mind exploring beyond his immediate passion for photography, Adams developed an exacting system of image making called the zone system. The method helped achieve a desired final print through a deeply technical understanding of how tonal range is recorded and developed in photographs. Since he had an innate passion for nature and capturing it in all its beauty, Adams was a lifelong advocate for environmental conservation and integrated practicing photography with his advocacy efforts. He was given his first camera at the age of 12 and his first visit was the wondrous beauty that is Yosemite National Park, one of my favorites. 12 must have been a really fruitful age for Adams as he also taught himself how to read music and play the piano. Some of his famous works include his first photographs of Yosemite, otherwise referred to as pictorialism. He traveled throughout the Southwest, U.S. national parks, and in later years settled in the central coast of California. That's a wrap for the Maria Cosette Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, much love to my guest today, Dr. Ruth Sobey, for sharing her experiences about media, television, education, and all the incredible work she's done. For more information about our show, please visit mariacosette.com slash television. Well, all this talk about photography, gotta take a pic. And remember everyone, stay creative. Mm -hmm.